Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson number 138, we're going to continue with really expanding that idea of REST versus messaging, which in lesson 137, I kind of turned into synchronous versus asynchronous communication. And we'll investigate something called dynamic quantum entanglement. So you can find a catalog and a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. You can actually watch the video here or uh, link it in YouTube. And as a matter of fact, uh, the material is mostly from two books that I wrote recently with uh, my friend Neil Ford, uh, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and Architecture, The Hard Parts. If you haven't already, I would pause this video and take a quick look at Lesson 137. In Lesson 137, I was going to say yesterday, but <laughs> in the last episode, we kind of looked at uh, the trade-offs and implications of using REST versus messaging. And I kind of turned that into synchronous versus asynchronous communication. As a matter of fact, uh, there I, I finally decided to wear my architecture shirt and I'm wearing it again today because in fact, it does depend. And that's the answer to REST versus messaging. But I wanna talk about a different aspect when making the choice between synchronous and asynchronous communication that's pretty vital and important to understand. And it all starts with something called an architectural quantum. This term was coined originally in the book Building Evolutionary Architectures that Neil Ford, uh, Rebecca Parsons, and Patrick Gua wrote. Uh, now, Neil and I refined this definition of an architectural quantum in our Architecture the Hard Parts book. And basically the definition of an architectural quantum is an independently deployable artifact with high functional cohesion and synchronous dynamic coupling. Now we'll see what that actually means, but the bottom line is this is really at a high level, architectural level, carving out the independent pieces of the system for the purpose that the discovery is that the architectural characteristics Maybe it's operational, like performance, scalability, elasticity, reliability. Maybe it's security. Maybe it's maintainability, agility, learnability. All of these live at the quantum level. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So let's say we've got a bunch of services here, an order placement, a wish list, a payment service, fulfillment to actually do the pick, pack, and ship processing of our order entry system and inventory control through an inventory service. Order placement and wish list all communicate through one particular database and payment, fulfillment, and inventory all interact with a different database. The users or our customers only interact with the order placement and wish list in this case. They don't interact with any of the other stuff. This is a good example of carving out what's called an architectural quantum because this part of the system is separately deployable. In other words, it contains all the parts needed, the user interface, all of the services, and the corresponding data. As a matter of fact, the functional cohesion here happens to be that this is all customer facing. I need high availability, high responsiveness, scalability, potentially elasticity, reliability, all of those architecture characteristics. But all this stuff occurs in the back end. And so it has a different set of architectural characteristics. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call that the back end processing quantum. This is also standalone. It includes its own database, uh, maybe user interfaces from an admin perspective. Uh, but this doesn't need high availability. This doesn't need high scalability or responsiveness or performance. This is all back end. And so you see, when we take a look at the definition, it's an independently deployable artifact, a grouping of user interface, services, and data that stand alone with high functional cohesion. In other words, that grouping has to be within a similar domain or a similar set of architecture characteristics, customer-facing versus the back-end processing. <laughs> 
with synchronous dynamic coupling? What does that part mean? That's the part I wanted to get to because that's the significance of choosing between synchronous and asynchronous communication. And let me demonstrate what I need mean. And because this, this really relates to a term that is called dynamic quantum entanglement. And if we kind of tear this apart, the dynamic piece is how we're actually calling different things. We have multiple quanta, and we can potentially entangle those quanta. And let me show you what I mean. So here's our order placement service, our customer facing area. Now payment is not required when placing an order. So this has those set of characteristics that need high availability, responsiveness, reliability, and um, fault tolerance, all of those kind of pieces. That's its own architectural quantum. And then we have all of our backend processing. Notice I've got a payment orchestrator here. And that orchestrator is synchronously calling payment and then asynchronously calling fulfillment and email. All of this is in the back end. And so consequently, that along with its data forms another architectural quantum. Notice here that with the back end portion, this piece here, I don't need all of those high availability, high responsiveness. It has a different set of characteristics. However, once I place an order, how should the order placement service communicate with the orchestrator? Async or sync? Rest or messaging? So let's take a look and see these options. If I were to use a restful call, in other words, synchronous communication between order placement and placement orchestrator to say, ah, I have an order, hold on customer, I need to get this to the orchestrator so we can start processing your order. Well, the problem is, because that's synchronous, I am now entangling both of those architectural quanta, and now what it forms is a single architectural quantum. This synchronous call means that the backend architectural quantum now needs to have the same characteristics as the front end. High availability, high responsiveness, high scalability, high elasticity. That's why it now forms a single quantum. As a matter of fact, coming back to the definition, synchronous dynamic coupling. When you communicate synchronously with any kind of service in another architectural quantum, you are effectively entangling those. And now all parts of that system are now not only coupled, but all have the same architecture characteristics. However, if we choose to use asynchronous communication, for example, messaging, this detangles those quanta and now, or quantum, <laughs> and now forms two architectural quanta. The idea here being placement orchestrator doesn't need to be available. It doesn't need to be responsive. I'm no longer dependent on those operations for my operations. And so this is an extremely important concept when choosing synchronous calls versus asynchronous calls. So take a look at your system, try to identify what those architectural quantum are. And consequently, the calls between those now start bringing up all of those same architecture characteristics. And this is something to actually be very careful for. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you, which is a question I get quite a bit when I talk about quantum entanglement. And that is, but what about request reply messaging? So lesson one, which I did record in January 2018. So as of the time of this recording, that was almost four and a half years ago. However, I understand the asynchronous thing because now this architectural quanta, quantum right here can have different characteristics. It doesn't need to be highly available because I'm using asynchronous communication. I can stand alone. But if I bridge this with, a syn with synchronous calls, it's all one unit. I can't exist without it. However, 
What about replacing that with request reply messaging? I make an asynchronous request over to the orchestrator, wait for the response to come back on the reply queue. Again, this was in lesson one, I kind of showed this request reply processing. What does that do to dynamic quantum entanglement? And what do you suppose the answer would be? You're right. Even though it's asynchronous using messaging, it is entangling those quanta into a single architectural quantum because it still is synchronous. Even though the implementation happens to be messaging, which is an asynchronous protocol, I still have to wait before I get back to the customer. Which means because of this wait, I am dependent on all this stuff for my processing. Again, those architecture characteristics have to be the same. And now I have to build up the back end to be responsive, available, and reliable. As reliable as my customer facing. So, don't be fooled by the fact that request reply messaging detangles quantum, quanta. It doesn't. And so this is one of those uh, kind of hidden little things when we start talking about uh, messaging, which is why I prefer the terms synchronous versus asynchronous. All right. That was a little bit of a heavy lesson, especially when you start using the word quantum. You start thinking about quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Well, it is a great term because it is the smallest possible unit that can stand alone in an architecture. So this has been Lesson 138, Dynamic Quantum Entanglement, kind of the last piece of the puzzle. And really looking at last lesson, two weeks ago, on request, or not request, but on rest versus messaging. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much for listening. I hope this kind of completes the picture for you in terms of some guidelines of when to use rest and messaging and when to specifically think more about synchronous versus asynchronous communication. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.